So acids and bases, as we talked about previously, right? Acids are proton donors, bases are proton acceptors. Now we can talk about how strong an acid is or how strong a base is. And when we talk about these acid and base strengths, what we're really kind of talking about is how well something transfers that proton or accepts the proton in the case of a base. So the first bullet point here says that when an acid dissolves in water, the proton that forms the hydronium ion at H3O plus is called dissociation. So in other words, the proton has to dissociate from the acid. So if you look at this equation down here, HCl plus H2O forms a hydronium ion and the chloride ion. In order for that proton to be transferred, the first thing that has to happen is the proton, where I'm pointing now, has to dissociate from the, the HCl. All right. In what we call a strong acid, 100% of the acid dissociates into ions. So when you take a strong acid, for instance, HCl, 100% of the HCl molecules that you put in there whenever you add it to water are going to separate into basically H plus and Cl minus. The H plus goes over here with the H2O to form the hydronium ion, and then you have the chloride ion left alone. So whenever you have a strong acid like this, we're going to use a single reaction arrow because there's really no coming backwards, right? Equilibrium means you have forwards and backwards. With a strong acid, there's really no backwards that happens. Um, common strong acids are shown at the bottom. Um, I want you guys just to know these last three here. So, and the reason is, is like whenever we talk about, um, whenever we get into organic chemistry, some of the reactions only occur in the presence of a strong acid, and these will be the three that you see. So, HCl, hydrochloric acid, H2SO4, sulfuric acid, and HNO3, nitric acid. Those are just really common strong acids that you should probably be familiar with. Um, a weak acid, um, on the other hand, if you were to look at it, so an example here is this acetic acid, CH3COOH. Whenever you put a weak acid in water, only a small fraction dissociates into the ions. So you have CH3COOH, you put it in water, you're only going to have a small amount that come over here and form the products. And you can see that by this unequal reaction arrow here. So this is what this is basically saying is that the... Um, the, pro the products, what well, the products are on this side, are present, but the reactants over here are what's favored. Um, and I'm going to make up numbers, even though this isn't going to be exactly right, but if you imagine you took 100 CH3COOH molecules and mixed it in water, you might get two that form the ion and 98 that stay over this way. Right? So you only get a partial dissociation as opposed to a strong acid where it's 100% dissociated. So that's the difference between a strong acid and a weak acid. Um, for weak acids, the probably the two you'll see most are going to be this acetic acid right here, the CH3COOH, which is acetic acid. You might as well go ahead and learn the name of that one now because you're going to see it uh, in the organic chapter, it's the structure you're going to have to know. Um, and the other one I would say is that you should probably know is going to be this H2CO3. Um, this is going to be important. Uh, carbonic acid is the name of this, and it's going to be important whenever we talk kind of later in this chapter about buffers and things like that. This is important physiologically. And actually, H3PO4 is also important physiologically, but we won't talk about that as much as we do the H2CO3. Okay, so here are the same things we just talked about in picture form. So a strong acid is going to be completely dissociated. So notice whenever you put HCl in the solution, you end up with H3O plus and Cl minus. You don't see any HCls left combined. You don't see any of the green spheres connected to a gray hydrogen. Whereas if you look over here at the weak acid, most of it is going to stay in this CH3COOH form, and you're only going to have a small amount that's dissociated. Um, the same definitions hold true for bases. So a strong base, 100%, is going to dissolve into ions. Um, a weak base is only going to partially dissociate. So 
instead of going through it all again, same premise we talked about before with the strong and weak acids. So common strong bases are going to be uh, sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide. In general, most of the hydroxide containing bases are strong bases. And then a weak base is going to be something like um, NH3 or ammonia or a lot of your nitrogen containing compounds are going to be weak bases. Remember, nitrogen containing compounds are bases because they have a lone pair of electrons, right? You need a lone pair of electrons to be a base. Um, so NH3 can be a base, it accepts a proton and becomes NH4. All right, strong base completely dissolves in water, completely dissociates into its ions. A weak base is only going to partially dissociate into ions. And here's a picture of that that shows the exact same thing. Okay, um, don't worry too much about this slide, but I just want to use this um, to kind of briefly try to hammer home this point of the difference between a strong and a weak acid and base. So if you have a strong acid, right, you're going to have a conjugate base that's formed. You would say that that Cl- is going to be a weak conjugate base because, right, a conjugate base would mean, so an acid donates a proton minus H plus. So we're saying a strong acid, that's going to happen a lot. So let's kind of right make this a really big, strong arrow here. That's going to happen a lot. Whereas going from Cl minus back to HCl, that's going to be a kind of a thinner, skinnier arrow where you still have a plus H plus, right? Um, plus, oh, that didn't turn out too good. Whoops, come back. Um, let me try writing that again. So you're going to have a plus H plus. So the conjugate base can be a proton acceptor to get back to a strong acid, but this one's going to happen so much more readily that this one hardly ever happens. That's why we say that the Cl minus is going to be a weak conjugate base. And the same thing would happen with a strong base, right? A strong base is going to favor going to the weak conjugate acid, the weak conjugate acid is not going to be very likely to come back to a strong base.